Hey hey kings, what's poppin? It's me, Cheems of Regret. Today I want to do a little experiment. But first things first, I have to explain what inspired me to do this in the first place. As of late, I've seen console fanboys of both sides, from Xbox and from PlayStation, try to play off the arbitrary and, in my opinion, useless Metacritic aggregate scores of their side's respective console exclusives. PlayStation fanboys act as if Metacritic scores are the be-all and all of measuring games. Xbox fanboys, on the other hand, say they don't care about scores, but they are very quick to lord over their own Metacritic scores whenever they have one that's pretty good. Frankly, it's really stupid. Review scores are stupid in general, I think. They're arbitrary, they don't measure up, they're not quantifiable, and they're based entirely on opinions which are more often than not biased. I'll get into it shortly, but do hit that like and subscribe button before you do. It helps the channel grow and also helps me feed my crippling plastic crack addiction. Back into the topic of review scores and why they're stupid. Review scores are wholly arbitrary and are entirely based on what the reviewers think it's worth. This is speculative value. This is ascribing value to an item based not on its inherent worth, but what you think it could be worth. But Cheems, you delightfully dapper and well-articulated fellow, I hear you interrupt. How can you ascribe worth to a game? People who don't enjoy Souls-like games won't find any worth in even the highest rated Souls-like games. The worth of a game is dependent entirely on how much enjoyment a player could get from it. That is a very intelligent line of thought, as I have come to expect from my highly intelligent and well-educated audience. Indeed, the worth of a game is derived entirely from how much entertainment you, or me, or anyone honestly can squeeze out of the game. That means a game's worth will wax and wane depending on the person evaluating. World in Conflict, a game that I reviewed recently, go watch it by the way, is a very good game and I would 100% give it a very high value. However, someone who knows jack and shit about playing RTS games would not be interested at all and would probably attribute the game a lower value. Another example then. A game journal gave Gran Turismo 7 a low-ish score because he wasn't interested in cars. A game about cars was reviewed by a dude who wasn't into cars and because of that the overall average score of the game dropped. That's the issue with review scores. It reduces the complexities and nuances of a game into an arbitrary number given out by people who may or may not be biased for or against said product. Now the problem becomes that these arbitrary review scores are being used as an objective means to measure and compare games, which I honestly believe is quite stupid. I've brought this up on a couple of my previous videos as a side note, but I'll repeat it here for those who didn't bother watching those. There is no such thing as the objectively best game. There are games that may be good in their respective genres, but an all-encompassing best game simply does not exist. You can't compare games of a different genre with each other on a one-to-one -one basis. Same genre? Probably. Different genres? Maybe you can compare a handful of universal aspects like graphical fidelity, art style, or narrative flow and delivery. But how are you going to compare an RTS to an arcade flight game? How are you going to compare a side-scrolling brawler to first-person shooter? One might have higher scores than the other, but they're still fundamentally different experiences that appeal to different kind of players. A racing game fan might opt to play a 7 out of 10 racing game over a 9 out of 10 rhythm game. Alright, alright, maybe review scores aren't entirely useless. You could still spitball how good or bad a game is based on the review score, but that is honestly still very iffy to work with. Ace Combat 7 has a higher score than Project Wingman, but I come back to Project Wingman more consistently than I do to the higher budget, higher scoring game. Why? Because I personally find Project Wingman has more replay value despite its clunky narrative exposition and repetitive mission structure. At the end of the day, the end user is who gets to decide the true value of a game. And this is why I think evaluating how good a game is using aggregate review scores and using it to compare to other games is honestly kind of sort of dumb. Especially if the differences are only marginal. Biases are going to take over when evaluating these games anyway and no matter how hard people try to be objective about it, personal preference will cloud their judgment. This finally brings me back to the experiment I mentioned at the start of the video. I've mentioned before that console fanboys from both sides like to lord around the high Metacritic scores of their favorite exclusives, but we've already established that reviewers are easily biased, and those biases can affect the scores they give. So what I want to do for the last bit of this video is to take the aggregate scores of these exclusives and remove the reviews from sources that I believe are very obviously biased. This means outlets like Push Square, Dual Shockers, Core Xbox, the Xbox Hub, Pure Xbox, Pure PlayStation, whatever have you, they're 
going to have their scores taken out of the average. Now there are some less obviously biased review outlets out there that I'm going to miss so don't take this experiment as the be all end all. I'm just trying to point out that these biased reviews exist and they do affect the score. Let's start with a game that I'm personally most biased for, Halo Infinite. We'll start by ditching the outlets that have Xbox connections or Xbox related terms in their names and the aggregate score suddenly dropped to 85. That's not a lot mind you, but it shows that these kinds of outlets do pump up the numbers. Now let's move on to Forza Horizon 5 which is even more critically acclaimed than Halo Infinite. Let's give this one the same treatment and the score dips by 1 point to 91. The difference is minuscule but I hope you're starting to see what I mean. Biases affect the scores given to these games, and I'm only discounting outlets which are very obviously biased for said platform. Now let's move on to the other side of the aisle because hell PlayStation has their shell outlets too. Let's work with something more recent like Gran Turismo 7. Removing reviews from outlets with PlayStation related names dips the score down to 87. Meanwhile Returnal goes from 86 to 85. Now I'm not saying that the recalculated scores I have here is the true scores that these games should have, I'm just removing outlets with Xbox or PlayStation related names from the scoring average. If you went in depth with each and every review and started calling out the ones that are most obviously biased towards or against the game, or maybe you call out the reviews that have unrelated subjects affect the scores like the creator's personal politics or whatever, you would probably find more changes but honestly I am too lazy to do that myself. Feel free to do it on your own though. My point is reviewers are biased, and you know what, I'm fine with that. I can fully understand that. Each and every one of us has biases at the end of the day. The thing is we shouldn't be giving games objective measurements and grades when we obviously let our biases affect our ratings. Instead we should give out reasons why others should try the game then give out quick points why and why not. Maybe if your opinion on the game is mixed, throw in a caveat on your recommendation. Maybe the game's in a rough state at the moment so you can tell them to give it a swing once the bugs are patched up. Or maybe the game is overpriced so you should pick up the game only if it's on a deep sale. It's a simple system with enough room for nuance while simultaneously cuts a lot of the BS that comes with a numbered rating system. I think it's just an overall better way to review games. It's why I don't give out scores at the end of my reviews. Just a recommend or a not recommend. Anyways, I'm just about done with this video. Remember to like, subscribe, and share the video if you feel like it. This has been Cheems of Regret, wishing you all good luck and Godspeed. Signing out.